The uh, Kitsilis Canyon is the point at which the Skeena River is uh, pinched off by uh, large rocks and and uh, mountains coming down into the river. So it has, for the last 10,000 years, made an ideal place for populations to settle. And it currently has four village sites uh, from time immemorial that are located in the Kitsilis Canyon and which have produced uh, more than 5,000 years of continuous occupation of that area. It's also an area that has many supernatural beings in the canyon that protect it from marauders and people who are coming through the canyon without actually paying dues to the people uh, of Kitsilas who have all of the rights of movement of goods and materials and people up and down the river and they have for thousands of years uh, defended that right. In the lower Skeena there are uh, the, the river widens out greatly and many floating root masses uh, provide a, a hazard to navigation today and in the past were seen also as part of the supernatural protection of the uh, Skeena River. Being one of the largest rivers in British Columbia, it was a major route of commerce up and down uh, from the interior to the coast and, and in the opposite direction, so large amounts of trade goods were carried there. The Haida, who would often raid the lower villages on the Skeena River, uh, were very uh, intimidated by these floating root masses, or snags, and actually uh, gave them a crest designation as Samus in the Haida language. So they were seen as supernatural monsters that could engage and swallow or drown a canoe that was coming up the river. So that was also part of the natural protection of the commerce and the people of the Kitsilis Canyon. The most recent occupation uh, was what is called White Town Kitsilis, now entirely obliterated and disappeared into the forest. But White Town Kitsilis was the staging ground for the stern wheelers that brought goods up and down the river. But even the Hudson Bay Company, which operated the stern wheelers, had to pay to uh, take goods through the Kitsilis Canyon to its traditional owners, the Kitsilis people. The town of uh, Kitsilis is, uh, before you go into the higher portions of the canyon, and you can see in this Im illustration a very steep trail leading up to the plateau uh, where most of the occupation took place. So there was a hoist, and you can see there are a number of people on a platform uh, traveling back and forth uh, between the upper part of the canyon and the lower part where White Town Kitsilis was located. In the background to the left you can see a few poles remaining from the Kitsilas Fortress or Gitladzok village site and a stern wheeler that is winching its way up and using its paddles as well to get through the narrow defines. This shows that the fortress where the posts and remains in the left background uh, are seen uh, could actually um, shoot projectiles or hurl uh, large rocks from either side of the canyon to prevent people going through who were not prepared to pay their uh, dues. In prehistoric times this meant uh, the canoes of people from the coast or from further in the interior could be effectively blocked and there were actually nets and ropes that could be put across the river also to control the movement of people and to exact the tribute to which uh, the Kitsilis uh, people felt they were entitled. Occasionally those uh, steamers came to ruin as you see in this one, one of the uh, steamboats, the stern wheelers that was wrecked in the Kitsilis Canyon and in the background you can see a fish drying uh, shed uh, on the bank of the river. Uh, it was also an excellent location uh, for fishing so that the population never had to move from the river although they did follow the trails over to the Nass to exploit the Ulican runs and to bring the grease back to their village because it was not possible 
to catch the Ulican in the uh, Skeena River. The runs were primarily up on the Nass River. But otherwise, they were completely self-sufficient with their territories and with the fishing stations in the localities of uh, the river where the village sites were located, which gave rise to one of the charter myths of the Kitsilas people, which is called the story of the Salmon Prince, which I'll talk about in a moment in regard to the interpretation of some of the poles. Uh, I did uh, locate uh, in one of the pools below the canyon the uh, drive rod uh, made of wood and bound with steel. Uh, so it's one of the larger artifacts remaining uh, from the sunken sternwheelers. During the winter, the river freezes over, and so transport is by pack dog and by sled uh, along the river and the connecting trails that lead uh, over to Kitimat and down to the Prince Rupert Harbour area and the villages of that region. So commerce continued through the winter. It wasn't locked by the freezing of the river. The fortress was at one time fortified with a palisade, but even in the late 19th century when this picture was taken, actually in 1875, the palisade is not visible, but the houses that uh, stood at the fortress, uh, which had the name of Gitladzok, the high people, uh, does show the house of the ranking chief, whose name was Kaum, and um, his house had four carved human figures at the corners, each corner of the house, to look up and down the river and in all directions so that uh, he could be warned by these uh, vigilant corner posts if anyone was trying to sneak their canoes through the canyon without stopping to pay the appropriate tribute. You can see in that uh, building that the roof ha boards have disappeared and you can actually see the huge interior beams that held up the house and there are a few other pieces propping up the edge of the house and yet there's a relatively new totem pole that has been erected in front of the house. So this uh, site was continued to be occupied through the 1880s and by that time uh, everyone had uh, moved over to the other village sites uh, where contact was uh, easier with the canneries of the lower river that were beginning to open up and to provide an alternate form of uh, income to the people of Kitsilis. They would continue to go back until the 20th century, and here we see a shot from around 1900, uh, in which the people of Kitsilis themselves are picnicking or uh, visiting in their Sunday finery, uh, one of the old village houses, the house in this case of Chief Gaum. You can see the massive roof timbers that have collapsed in the foreground and also the uh, house post uh, with the figure of a man holding a large fish club. And this is uh, one of the chiefs from the story of the uh, Prince of Salmon. Uh, the story is also called Old Moldy Nose because the uh, admonition was uh, current throughout the Skeena River that no one should keep uh, any of the salmon in the storage boxes for more than one year. That was considered to be very bad luck and that the fish would not come back if in fact uh, the boxes weren't cleaned out each year. And a woman neglected to do that and she uh, lost her nephew to uh, beings of salmon people, spirits of the river, who took her son to the mouth of the river in the house of a salmon chief, where he was taught to eat the salmon in a proper fashion. The other uh, families related particularly to the beaver crest, which we see on this fallen totem pole. The beaver has his traditional gnawing stick between his teeth, and this refers to another, what I would call, charter myth of the Quetzalas people, that the uh, giant beavers 
who were damming the the Skeena River uh, in the early days. This is in the earliest uh, times of prehistory. Um, were actually forcing the river to flow south through the channel to Kitimat instead of down through the lower Skeena. And it, with the current evidence for the time depth of some of the legends and myths of this part of the coast, uh, we can see that there are episodes that go back as far as 10,000 years and even more to the end of the Ice Age in this area. Uh, this is particularly true out in Hecate Strait where the Haida and the Simshin have traditions about the sea uh, not coming in until later. They had hunting and fishing grounds out into Hecate Strait and as the ice melted at the end of the Ice Age the water came up and they were separated to Haida Gwaii on the one hand for the Haida and to the mainland for the Simsian. Now the story of the giant beaver which uh, the people of Kitsilas were in conflict with and eventually destroyed the beaver village and opened up the passage to the Skeena uh, and to uh, the Prince Rupert Harbour area that uh, this coincides in, in, in as a way of uh, metaphorical statement with the blockage of the Skeena, Lower Skeena, by ice and the evidence that is there for the river flushing south uh, to Kitimat. Uh, so the struggle of the Kitsilis people with the giant beaver probably does relate back 10,000 years and slightly more to the period when exactly that kind of blockage occurred on the Skeena River. There were other poles that were uh, had decorations or crest figures on the top, including uh, the one in this image, which had uh, a nest of birds uh, on the top with small human figures, which we'll see in, in a, a moment, moment or, or two. two. But each family had its own uh, village uh, or house site and would come back there long after the, the village was no longer occupied on a year-round basis, as did other visitors. So tourism, as with these white visitors who are there, uh, was a feature of the fortress in particular because of its carved monuments. Here we see another figure, another example of the man with the fish club holding up the beam of the house and one of the watchful corner figures, corner posts, uh, looking out to the river. Eventually even this monument uh, fell down so this picture which was uh, taken around 1918 uh, is just prior to the collapse of that house frame and we can see here uh, some of the nicely carved uh, details on that uh, house and and how until it was almost fallen over it continued to support the house beam which would have been fastened in by iron spikes to the top of that. And in this image we can see the slots in the right hand side of the post itself where the gable boards and the uh, sills of the house were carefully fitted into uh, one of the four of these poles. And another view of one of the corner posts with the fine carving that uh, shows there. This photograph was taken in uh, 1971. So uh, these posts were re-established, re-set up by a party from the Canadian Museum of Civilization, then just called the National Museum of Canada, led by Harlan I. Smith. Smith also uh, excavated samples and artifacts uh, from the fortress, uh, but um, only did rough sketch maps. So I began uh, the work there by having a detailed uh, topographic map of the uh, village done showing clearly where existing uh, house structure poles and posts were located, uh, the rough outlines of the house and also uh, on the left hand side on the steep slope the location of the stone totem which was uh, first uncovered by Harlan Smith and uh, later by our team who excavated there 
uh, in the mid-70s. A more uh, exact detail of the House of Chief Gaum shows that the two support posts uh, were uh, clearly at the back of the house away from the river. The steep banks of the river are on the left-hand side of this illustration. Uh, and quite a few of the big structural timbers that were associated uh, with that house and the base of some of the uh, poles that were erected as the one Mark B down in the far right-hand corner of the image. Here we have the party from the Canadian Museum of Civilization about to do castings of these uh, poles which were done. The original poles were left in situ and have now been uh, located in the uh, interpretive center that the people of Kitsilas have created uh, in the last couple of years uh, at the canyon site itself but on the other bank from where these posts were originally located. So you see here on the left uh, one of the four corner posts and on the right uh, one of the support uh, interior posts um, which were relocated and repainted these colors we see here uh, by Harlan I. Smith uh, in 1926 and 27 when he worked there uh, under the sponsorship of the uh, Grand Trunk Pacific Railway uh, which was trying to develop the site as a tourist site. Here is a photograph taken by Adelaide de Manil, a New York photographer. She did a thorough uh, photographic inventory of all of the uh, structural remains and the carved monuments in the Kitsilis Canyon uh, in 1971. In this overview we see the site in 1926 when Harlan I. Smith and Marius Barbo, they were working together on this project, had cleared the top of the fortress. You can also see how the roadbed of the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway running on the left has filled in much of that bank and made it possible for people to uh, cross over from the railway to visit the old village location. And at one point there was even a wooden trestle bridge built between the track and the uh, outcropping that supported the fortress. I think it is worth noting that the fortress was an island at one time with water flowing all around it. So this made it also very good uh, for canoes to be able to evacuate the site. Here we can see in this overview, uh, uh, one from the 1970s, that the area on the river side uh, is the entire village site uh, cut off by the railway tracks and the gully filled in. And you can actually see towards the left hand side a uh, pole, one of the taller poles sticking out of the canopy and the house of Chief Kaum would have been on the upper left uh, portion of uh, that prominence. Many carved older pieces uh, were found by Harlan Smith but have not survived to today except uh, in the photographs that he left behind and here is uh, a human figure much eroded on one of the poles that had collapsed and in this pole we see that same beaver post but now fallen over and, and very much rotted at the base compared with the picture we saw with the family of that house uh, taken around 1900. We can also see a small beaver on the head of the larger beaver and the hero who killed the, uh, the beaver and opened the dam above that. Some very unusual architectural features were found including the way in which this massive uh, plate was attached to a corner support post uh, with something like a dovetail joint, uh, rather unique and not found in any of the other uh, villages of the north coast. But you can also see the, to the right the fallen totem pole uh, for that house which has been become covered with uh, vegetation um, and also one of the major central roof beams of that house.